Andy, how are you? I'm doing fine. Why aren't we talking about the warmest movies? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. There was just a little piece that somebody sent me talking about the uh, coldest movies all time, and it was a it was a it was a bad list. Uh, some of them were good. Fargo was number one, uh, which makes sense. But yes, caller. I've had enough snow. We should talk about warm movies for a while. Yeah, I'm with you there. Go ahead, caller. Oh, all right. Never mind. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, here's uh, Andy Crowner from the city of West Burlington, where it is uh, in the negative numbers this morning. Again, dot, 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 again. The good news, though, as we've unraveled this morning, uh, Alliant Energy is not part of this Southwest power pool that is uh, having the rolling blackouts. We're fine. Um, they are asking, you know, in a voluntary sense only, for people to conserve, and they're not turning off our power as they're doing in... 13 other states. So that's good for us. Yeah, I can't imagine that happening here. I mean, something I never thought I'd have to deal with in my lifetime. You know, it's, uh, it's a crazy deal, and I'm glad we don't have to do it, but feel bad for everybody out there. And and uh, also just wanted to say, hey, thanks for our city workers out there working out in the cold all yeah. day, every day right now, snow plowing. They're doing a good job. Right on. Um I turned off the movie lights in here. That's how I'm doing my part. <laughs> I, left, I left the regular fluorescent lights on, the kind that make me look old and pasty. Uh, and uh, I've turned off the movie lights that make me look like a movie star. Um, that's, that's what I can do from my doing humble. Doing your part. Yep. <laughs> it's a tremendous sacrifice. <laughs> Only to be doubled by my skipping meat today, apparently. So, anyway... Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the city of West Burlington is uh, doing a number of things uh, tonight. I think there's a work session or something, right? We've got a full meeting tonight and then a really quick budget work session afterwards, just kind of a wrap-up meeting. Uh, so a few things tonight. Tonight will be the final reading of the agency street speed limit change, so you'll be seeing that go into effect here pretty quick. As a reminder, that's going to change 35 miles an hour heading west of Walmart out there, uh, out past the hospital and SBC out to Washington Road. Um, so be looking for those signs. It'll be up pretty quick here after that. Yeah, this is your last call. You know, like you do 1.30, they do at the bar. And, hey, last call, last call. This is your last call for speeding on Agency Street. Yeah, uh, if you want to go 45, go do it today and, and be a little careful at the intersection. Right, right on. Uh, these roads are not great in the first place. I don't think anybody's... Um, intentionally speeding on these days but uh yeah, yeah so that'll be after today and then uh the ramsey street no parking thing has i think it's second reading maybe or had one yeah, last second, week second reading tonight so the next meeting will be the third reading and again that's right out front of the elementary there's the administration office there so south of the elementary about 60 feet uh, we're going to block that area off from 7 a.m to 4 p.m um just traffic reasons kids safety issues as there's a cross rock crosswalk right there and a parking lot right there so we'll get that done um we're also looking at going ahead and sending out a proposal for a fire engine tonight uh, we were notified that uh, prices are going to go up about three percent in april um, we're not looking at actually getting this until july of 2022 but they take about a year after you order them to actually get them in so we're looking to go ahead and improve on that tonight do they build them one at a time or what 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 takes so long about that do I they is it not like a car dealer where they have a bunch of them on a lot and they just have to slap your name, City of West Burlington or whatever, on there? You know, you would think we would get to that point by now, but I think it's kind of like the same with school buses. When we were ordering those, they took about a year or eight months to get in. And so things like that, they're either so busy they're running behind or they don't build it until you order them. So it hmm. does take a while to get in. But, you know, with the way we work with budgets, that works fine. We, You know, hopefully you should be planning for those kind of things. You don't need one tomorrow. Uh, Rise Grant Engineering, there was some talk about that. Yeah, so there is a company looking to purchase the Raider building out in West Burlington. And so we're going to work on subdividing those lots out there and getting a new road uh, to go out through the subdivision. Um, but this is the first step. So we need to do a couple uh, engineering things to apply for a grant um, to help fund that road going through there. So. Not a great expense at this point in time, but we're going to look at uh, starting that process and getting an engineer working on it. 
So I'm trying to. So there's the rise grant in education, which is like research training, you know, research yeah, initiative. Helps build, you know, roads and infrastructure for for new, uh, you know, new commercial projects, and um, so it's it's. I believe it's state money, and and so it should help fund quite a bit of that road going in there and getting this done. And this will add quite a few jobs to the area. And I think the good thing is that I, I think it has room to expand going forward too. Uh, good looking company. I've met with people, and uh, I believe they actually have a purchase agreement now on that property, so it's moving forward. I found it. Revitalize Iowa Sound Economy. There we go. Whew. I knew I knew what that was, but I couldn't remember. It's used in a lot of different areas the transportation part of it revitalize iowa sound economy program right so you that's a state of iowa grant do we match or have uh, other obligations with that do you know i don't think it's a match we will end up having some money in this for sure um i i, I don't know exactly how much they're going to cover it depends on what they do with our grant but any money we can get you know should help and you know let's say it's a I don't know, maybe it's an $800,000 road. If we can get $600,000 of that paid or something, that, that should be a big help. So either way, something we need to do and, and help develop that little uh, you know, West Burlington kind of only business park out there uh, and get that going. So it should be you know, good jobs coming in that building, but then also open up some other opportunities out there as well. What's the other budget work going on besides that? Uh, we need to kind of finalize everything. So a quick work session tonight to just, you know, final discussion, any last comments. Uh, then we're going to set a public hearing for March 17th um, and then actually approve the budget that night. Um, so any comments you have, send them into to City Hall and um, we'll read them out at the meeting. I know it's kind of hard to go to them at this point in time with COVID stuff, but um, pretty good budget. We're still looking at nine dollars and sixty-five cents, thirty-five cent decrease, and quite a few West Burlington improvements in there. So I think we did a pretty good job. I didn't realize. So there's still not uh, public uh, attendance at uh, council meetings. You know, we've had a few people come in, um, but you know, if we were to get a large number in there, it really wouldn't be able to space out. So we do ask people that they, you know, call in or. Uh, email their their comments in beforehand um, you know also that gives us time to, to look at, at things and ask questions too if we get those before the meeting uh, where if you're getting it at the table two seconds before you got to vote that doesn't really help us as much as if you send it early right this is andy crowner from the city of west burlington uh snow reminder where in both cities i think we're supposed to clear our sidewalks within a 24 ish hour period but there's been so much snow on and off and on and off i for one can't keep up yeah it's been rough i know i've got a fairly large driveway and then sidewalks going and then honestly once i got the, the snow blower out i'm doing the neighbors too might as well and, and so just turning around at, at uh, the end of my property so uh yeah it's cold and uh, it's not fun but you know we do need to do that and it you know, we have uh, that on the books for a reason that you need to clear your snow um, within 24 hours. And so we're really looking at that and going, hey, we got to enforce that. Otherwise, it opens the city up to liability. If somebody would fall on your property and we're not enforcing our code, then it opens us up. So we need to enforce that. So please clear it off your sidewalks. Get those clear within 24 hours. Uh, hopefully, we're about through the most of this. And if you're elderly or can't for some reason, uh, there's uh, some volunteers that would help, correct? Yeah, Kathy Christie, uh, the councilwoman, has set up this new project in West Burlington, Neighbors Helping Neighbors. You can sign up online on, on uh, West Burlington's website. And we do a background check on both parties, the person asking for help and the person giving it. And so there's a little safety there. And so we have people willing to help you with your sidewalks. And if you want to sign up and help with that, you can go online and do that as well. Pretty good program. Excellent. All right, switch hats. Let's talk about real estate for a minute. Uh, I continue to read the headlines over and over about how strong the not just the local but all the way to the national real estate market. Uh, I understood this when you explained it, you know, half a year ago in the midst of COVID and whatever, but why is it staying strong? 
It is still the interest rates, and there's no look at that. Yeah, there's no talk about that going down at this point in time. Um, so we're probably looking at you know at least six months more of this. But I think what people don't understand here, we've got it pretty easy. Houses are selling for a little bit more here, and they're selling a little bit uh, faster than they normally would. But you go into a larger market, and offers are having to be 10 and 20 percent over list price. People are getting 10 and 20 offers at a time. Um, so the larger areas, it's really hot. Here it's hot, but you can still get a great buy on a house. And I think what it really means is, you know, not only is your home value up if you're selling your house, but even though that home value is up, it's still cheaper for you as a buyer to purchase long term because your interest rate is so low. So it really is the best time, at least in my lifetime, to buy and the best time to sell. So <laughs> it's best of both worlds. So if you're, you're thinking about buying and moving up in a house right now, it's a great time. Great time to be a realtor. Exactly. Yeah. And, and Burlington area is really moving. I know that the areas around us, you know, Fort Madison, Minneapolis, Danville, there's some, some good houses there, but their turnover is, is so low compared to the Burlington area. Uh, houses here are just moving fast. Um, there's a lot that come on the market and a lot, get, a lot that go off just as fast. Um, so, it, you know, find a good realtor. Obviously, I'd love to help you out. Um, but you really need one right now because the things like Realtor.com and Zillow are, are so far behind what's actually happening in the market that if you're not working with a realtor, you're not seeing the houses that are coming on this second. Uh, Andy, the uh, I was reading this morning 115 million Iowans are behind on their electric and gas bills, and uh, there's been that moratorium where you're not allowed to cut off people's power because of the COVID and all. Is that, that same thing went for foreclosures too, right? Correct, and this is a national thing. So President Biden just pushed the foreclosure moratorium out. It was supposed to end in March. He just pushed it till July. Um, so cannot wow. uh, foreclose on your property at this point in time. Um, and also offers six months after that. So if you had signed up um, for mortgage forbearance before that cutoff, which is June 30th, you can get an extra six months after that. So, um, And then if you're renting, same thing. There is an eviction moratorium, um, but that still ends on March 31st, and he did not extend that. So That's backwards from what it ought to be. Uh, well, you would think you the know, people with rent would need it the most. I don't know. You're right, except, you know, imagine if you've got a rental house and right. that person's not paying, but you're still having to make your mortgage payment. Oh, yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes it's sense. It's a tough thing, and there's still a lot of people, uh, estimated about 5 million people total, uh, missing on mortgage and rent payments right now in the U.S., and I wouldn't be surprised if that number goes a little higher. So we still, even though this market is hot, we do have to remember that there's a lot of people hurting. Um, they're shut down, especially in some other states that are locked down even further. Um, and so that could give us a slight correction uh, nationally when uh, that moratorium goes away and more inventory hits the market. Right. Um, it could nationally kind of change things, but I, I don't see that happening as much here. Um, a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about ABB leaving the old uh, GE plant, they were taking or offering those people to be able to go to Mebbin, I believe is how they pronounce the town in North Carolina. Uh, and I was, of course, mocking it instantly, not knowing anything about it. Uh, but somebody had asked a question about relative to here, what are the housing costs and some of the living costs there? Because even though... A person that stayed here might have to take a job for a little bit less money than the one they had. I think we'd still be ahead of the game we were trying to figure out. Did you figure that out? I did, and what I pulled was actually the last four years of stats, so we weren't getting thrown off just by COVID numbers, right. um, either right. out there or here. Um, so a couple numbers for you. The, I, I believe they had said it was about equal housing, but they were comparing it to Iowa City, so... If you look at the Burlington area versus versus their area, uh, median housing cost right here it's about ninety three thousand dollars. Out there, it's just double that. It's one hundred and eighty nine thousand dollars. Wow. Median housing cost out there. So yeah, it's it's quite a bit more expensive. It it, it is more like an Iowa City than than here. And, and I think if you look at the geography out there, you're actually 
really close to Chapel Hill and right. You know, it's a small town, but you're right next to some larger towns. So not just larger, but cashy, trendy, high earner towns. You know, yeah. yeah and so the median owner cost, you're going to buy a house here. You're paying about a thousand dollars a month, a thousand fifty one. Out there, you're paying just over fourteen hundred a month, so fourteen ten. Um, so your your average cost of owning that house goes up about four hundred dollars. Um, That's five renting, grand. It's five grand a year, right? Something like that. Right. Yep. Yeah, more than that, right? Just a little bit more. So, um, you know, and I, I wouldn't be surprised to see that go higher when you start factoring in other other expenses of of living out there. I I would think it would be higher than just your housing costs. What about rents? Yeah, your rent prices as well. Here it's seventy seven ninety nine as a median number, and out there it's nine thirty seven. So you're gonna, you know, one hundred and fifty bucks, one hundred and forty dollars, something like that, uh, a month in rent as well. I haven't rented since the, when I very, very first moved here 30 plus years ago. Um, our rent was 400 and something. So it's 800 now in round numbers, but uh, almost nine and a half for Mebane, North Carolina. Hmm. That's, um, that's, a, that's an eye opener. And hopefully that will, I, it's one thing to close down our plant. And we lose those jobs. It's another thing to take our people out of here. I don't want to see that happen. Yeah, and, you know, there's a couple new projects coming in. I, I think there's somebody moving into the, the Siemens building here fairly soon. And then, you know, as we talked about with the Raider building, so obviously those won't give a job to every single person out at ABB, but that's right. a pretty good start. And, you know, the timing of those are good. We've got some, some workers that will need help. And, you know, I've also heard, you know, places out in Mount Pleasant, uh, you know, I think it was Heat later um, which is – a different name now, Hearth and Home or something like that. I've heard they're hiring quite a few people. Hmm. Um, so, and I think they pay pretty good too. So good company there. So I think there's some jobs around. Hopefully we can keep people here and, and uh, you know, keep this town going. And I think at least in West Burlington, we've got some new developments coming up. That'll be good. And we've got some areas that people are trying to sell and develop, like the lots of, out around the mall. So, right. I think our, our tax base is looking good from a city pr- perspective, and it was the same when I was on school board. You know, West Burlington's looking pretty good, so um, hopefully we'll just keep going and moving here and, and get some more jobs in. Someone said the West Burlington radio station was looking for a Saturday guy. <laughs> <laughs> but you wouldn't put that in the category of pays good. <laughs> right. Certainly not. Uh, all right. Uh, this is Andy Crowner. You can get more information at andycrowner.com. Check out the Remax. Uh, website as well, which is what, Andy? Uh, Remax.com? Or? Yeah, Remax.com will get you there, but our local one is BurlingtonIowaHomes.com. Oh. Um, you can get local listings there, information on all our realtors and, and our local Remax here. And you know what? Still off to a great start this year. We're selling a ton of houses, even in the cold, and just sold one, closed on one uh, really nice little ranch on Friday. And but uh, we need more houses to sell, so if you're at all interested, please give us a call. we got a lot of buyers. Get to andycrowner.com or Facebook. Search Andy Crowner. Thanks, Andy. Good to hear from you. We'll see you next week. Thanks. Stay warm. Yeah, thanks a lot. 8.30, KCPS. We'll stop for the bottom of the hour news on this Ash Wednesday.